uh, I'm an Apache CouchDB committer. I'm also a member of the PMC, which is the Project manager, Management uh, Committee. And uh, I'm with Craftsman since a long time, so 15 years or so. So, um, Frower starts from G-Unicorn. Uh, since a long time, I'm thinking to, to, build, to build a library that is able to, um, that allows me to buy uh, concurrential programming programs. And uh, behind G-Unicorn, there is a process manager, in fact. Uh, we are launching workers, we are forking workers, we are able to manage them, to share the connection between the workers, to, uh, to increase the number of workers, to, uh, to make sure that the worker is idle, or uh, we can uh, kill a worker if it takes too much time, etc. And uh, two years ago, I built for Mibu a library, Pistil, which was uh, extracting the G-Unicorn engines uh, for Mibu. And uh, in this library, you can, you can launch process on multiple, uh, on multiple uh, cores, like Unicorn does. You can uh, s share your connection. You can, can share your socket between the workers. And uh, you can do everything that you can do with Unicorn, but in your library. But it wasn't enough. It actually working well for Mibu. Uh, it was actually working well for Mibu because it had been bought by uh, Google three months ago, but, uh, but it wasn't enough. So, but before talking about Flower and what, what it does, I will just make an aparty uh, about uh, concurrent programming. Today we have two camps in concurrent programming. We have the concurrence of people that are doing concurrent programming with threads, with locks, and people that are doing concurrent programming with event loops. So I'm sure Everyone of know, already knows what is a thread, so I will just talk about uh, an event loops. So an event loops is just a way to pass message. Uh, at the bottom, this is a, a giant loop that is waiting for a message, process the message, and getting the next message, etc., etc., etc. So events, uh, we all know the events uh, based on the sockets. But uh, events can also be uh, in your game application that could also be, could be a click or an event on the screen or whatever. So in short, uh, an event loops based on I.O. here on sockets. This is that. So we have these giant loops waiting for message. We have the connections, the sockets that we register in this loop. In this loop. And we start to react on events. So events on the socket are read and write. When, when you can read on the socket, when you can write on the socket, etc. So when, when a read appear, an event is processed in your application. Your application say, I'm, I want to write, send this event to the event loops, and the event loops will eventually process it. So uh, what, what is allows is the possibilities to, to handle multiple events in your application in one thread without breaking the, um, the other events in your applications. Well, until you have too much events. And uh, so you make asynchronous programming in a synchronous world. Uh, on event loops, we have different patterns. I will talk um, about it later. Reactor and trampolines. So um, the main drawbacks we spread is mostly the synchronization. And we all know that if you are using Python, you are, using, you have, uh, you are pretty limited by the kill. And what does the kill is to allow you to, to do your, all your magic in Python uh, using your objects, uh, using your passing data from one object to the other, from one thread to the other, using global objects, etc., without locking. And in fact, it is locking with the kill one times it waits for all f for one message from the thread, for one tick from the thread, and uh, process the tick in your in your application, and go back and release the gill, etc. So synchronization is very difficult, and Python solved it on by saying, we just stop all the work, uh, all the threads, process them, then go back later, etc., etc. But if you want to do parallel programming, it becomes very hard. Uh, you have to wait for one thread. Uh, under the event, send the, the event to another thread. This another thread was waiting for it, and eventually you, you will, it will uh, under another action on another thread, etc., etc. So it becomes 
very complicated to do it. And so synchronization is a problem, and the other problem is the memory and uh, and how fast you want your application because spanning a uh, thread is very slow on the systems. Uh, it's even slower to span a, a REST process, but spanning a, a thread is already slow. And spanning a, th a thread also takes some memory on, on your application, so the more threads you have, the more slower st will be your application and the more RAM you will take in your, in your system. So most of the time, just give up and you do, uh, um, like all the cool kids, you put an event loops on your systems because an event loops work on one thread. About event loops, so I was looking uh, for an event loops uh, image on the Google. I didn't find one, but I didn't find these loops. Uh, so people are attending to an event in Boston, and uh, so you have a big line behind, and uh, this is the main problem, main drawbacks with event loops. You can have a lot of events. You can have a lot of people participating to your event loops, and so you will struggle your event loops. You will lock it, or eventually it will crash. Uh, so long-running handlers uh, make your application unresponsive. Can make your application. There is also no CPU. Uh, you can you can't span your your event loops on multiple threads. You will be able to launch multiple event loops on d different threads, but uh, an event loops works on one thread only. So there is no parallelization with event loops. Absolutely none. Uh, and uh, this is why in Node.js, for example, they have now these new models cluster, which allows uh, them to span a uh, new process with a new event loop on each process to make parallel things. Uh, it's also very difficult to, uh, to make an event loop working on all the systems. So if you want something working on Windows, for working on Linux, working on BSD, this is very hard because each platform has, has its own specificities. If you follow the mailing list Python, ID, Python IDs uh, at this moment, there is a thread about the future uh, async API, maybe in Python. And uh, they are all talking about uh, the possibilities to have an event loops. And someone talk, just talked uh, two days ago about IOCP, which is uh, an API on Windows to handle uh, asynchronous events. And the IOCP, uh, API is something very smart for changing from Microsoft. And uh, the guy uh, wanted to have the same API on all the systems, which can be a real problem to others. Actually, there is only one event loops uh, that can handle IOCP on Windows, that can handle SkyQ on BSD, that can handle ePoll on Linux, Poll on all the systems, which is libuv, which is the event loops used by NHS, and that you can use on Python with the Pi UV uh, bindix, bindix. Um So you have two camps, threads or uh, event loops. But sometimes uh, uh, some people uh, were just saying 20 years ago that uh, why do we have to care about threads or event loops? Just use both or do something smarter that, we, that would allow us to, to use both. And so this is Ply9. I don't know if you know these systems which is an old Unix system uh, created uh, yeah, 20 years ago, uh, which is still live. Uh, there is a meeting in, uh, in the Borg uh, next week, uh, two weeks. And um, what does the system is to allow you to span any process on any machine, on any core, without, uh, you, uh, you don't have to care, to take care, to care of that is where it is running. You just write to your resource, which is on the file system, just like you have a process system on a Linux, Linux, and uh, read the data back. So you don't care that it's, this is running on, a, on a, another machine or on your machine. Uh, in Planline, you have thread, or rather what we call task, uh, in other systems, which are low um, light threads, and that uh, were switching and um, Creation is very cheap, and threads do not know anything about themselves. There is no lock. Uh, you a thread only speak with other using channel, and so a channel is a way to pass message from one thread to the other or one task to the other. 
and events are considered as just simple message. So you can eventually have an event loop um, waiting on I.O. events, but it will be just a message passed to your thread using a channel. We talk about that later. So you don't have in, any locking problems in Plan 9. You, don't, you can use any core you want. You can use any machine you want. You can uh, make uh, any parallelization you want. And you don't rely on I.O. Uh, all the event loops you have around, Twisted, uh, LibUV, etc., are based primarily on I.O. events. And then you can eventually have uh, uh, asynchronous event callback events in that, but this is, this is before or after I.O. events, or when there is none. Um, speaking about having uh, two camps, threads, an event loop is really nonsense, because beyond uh, an event loops you have thread. You are using threads beyond the UBV. The Node.js guys are pretty cool, but seeing that they don't use any threads is pretty dumb. They are using threads, a lot of threads behind event loops. Um, we can use both uh, all together if you want. A lot of people does that. Uh, so le let's talk about a little how, uh, what is existing in the Python world. So uh, one asynchronous library that works well today, uh, and that was actually 22 years ago, uh, is Turn Web which was released open source by uh, Facebook when they bought, uh, I don't remember the name of this uh, company. Uh, Tornado targets specifically the uh, web application, so uh, the event loop works only on sockets. Uh, you are not supposed to, 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 to put a file in the event loops. It could work, it should work, uh, like it's written, written but uh, this is really done for socket events. Uh, all the callbacks callback are processed before uh, any uh, input-output events in the event loops. Uh, other possibilities that provide the event loops are timeout, you can, uh, which is like uh, the sleep, time sleep. You can just interrupt your uh, programs, wait for uh, the next timeout, and come back from the loop to your, uh, to your, um, to your function. And you have periodic callback like Chrome, uh, it's it will periodically call back uh, a callable. And Tornado can be have a system to span on multiprocess, just like in Genicorn, to share the sockets, but they don't have any supervision uh, on such things, so that's why a lot of Tornado users are using Genicorn to span process, using the Tornado worker. Uh, this is a simple hello world of Tornado. So you have... Uh, uh, so you have a main handler here, which is a request handler, a get function that will react on get on the web when you get a new, a new file, and just send back an hello world. Here are simple row systems, and you can see, most interesting, that it starts the event loops and just wait for any events in that. Main drawbacks of Tornado, this is it only targets the web. Uh, until 2.4 at least, and this is only socket-based. Uh, so it can be a problem uh, when you start to, to, to want to introduce a new other events like uh, having a UI on top of Tornado or anything. But you can plug a um, twisted uh, reactor uh, in place of the higher loops events in Tornado. Also, uh, since 2.4 they introduced a new model which is the gen models. Uh, gen models is a gen, uh, is a modules allows you to uh, that allows you to uh, use a Python generator transparently. And uh, here, what it does? So, ah, sorry. So you have this decorator gen engine that will make uh, this request, uh, this get function using a, uh, that will put this function in a generator. Here you will see that uh, instead of just getting back uh, the response immediately, it yelled a new task in generator, and uh, when uh, this task does one thing, it fetches the contents of the U, uh, URL example.com, and when the content gets back in the response, it will do something with the response. 
So it's pretty uh, in synchronous. Here, it interrupts the program, lets the other callback that you have in your application running, and go back when the response comes back. So this is pretty new, and it, it can be interesting if you want an application based on generator. G-Events, uh, or rather G-Event-likes, uh, eventlets work the same. And for people that uh, still think that G-Event is faster than eventlet, they should just use uh, eventlet with uh, pi uh, ev uh, models hub, uh, which use uh, lib ev just like G-Event does. This is uh, as fast as it is. So G-Event or eventlet or any system like uh, are using coroutines. Uh, coroutines are handled by the greenlets modules that was provided, extracted from stackless. Beyond G event, you have a big event loop that is running actually, um, the stable version of G events works on lib events. The future version of lib events may work on lib -ev, or maybe lib UV, depending on the humor of Dennis, I think. Uh, so, what does it do? Uh, the event loop is started in a greenlet, and when you want to span a new process, a new greenlet, it will first go in the event loop, put a callback in the event loops, let the event loops running, and when the event loops come back on an, on an event, go back, uh, call back your function, awake your function that was waiting, and the, the greenlets will be effectively switched. Uh, what does it mean is that um, on Tornado, we are waiting on get event, on win events. The get event will be, will be used. Here, what does G event is a trampoline system. Uh, it simply switch the, socket, uh, the, uh, the greenlet, wait for the read events, and when the read events appear, the, um, the event loop will switch back to this greenlet and then it will continue the processing, which, uh, which is what we call uh, trampoline. The main reason why people are using G-Event is also because it's doing monkey patching, so you can use the socket objects in Python just like you use the socket objects uh, without uh, G-Event, which may be good or maybe not, uh, because uh, when, you are, uh, when you don't know the magic behind, you can pretty lock your, uh, your application. So here is a simple hello world. Uh, you start the whiskey server here, and you just uh, this is just a whiskey application. So, like you can see here, uh, we don't know that we are using an uh, event loops. Uh, we don't know nothing, which is, I think, one big drawback uh, in G event. Uh, the first problem and. I was speaking this morning that it should be in the FAQ of JUnicon. The, the first problem that people are contacting us when they are using JUnicon with the async worker, G-Event, is why do my application still block? I'm using the async worker, the request has spanned in uh, light thread, light green lights, and uh, I'm also using green lights in my application, but suddenly it blocks. And the first question I ask in that, uh, at that time is, are you doing file uploads? Are you writing files from the web to your, to your file systems? And most of the time, this is yes. So the guy just take the response from the socket and write it directly to the file system. At this point, G-Event uh, didn't patch the file and the file uh, the, the write on the file systems. So because the write are not patched, if you start to write, I don't know, one megabyte on your file system, this is during these times all your greenless all your event loops will be locked, waiting that to come back in the event loops. So don't forget if you do, if you still want to use G-Event with monkey patching, to sleep from time to time when you do a big upload or whatever, to switch back in the event loop. Um, the other big guy uh, in uh, the async world uh, and concurrency world in Python is Tristan. Uh, they are here maybe since 10 years. Something like it, maybe more. I don't know. They are also using an event loops, but uh, like Node.js mostly, they are using a reactor pattern, which means that you have your application when an event comes back, it just you register callback on events, and when an event comes, it call back your callable on that. 
You can have multiple reactors, so you can have reactor reacting on IO events. You can have, if you are using Kiwi, which is a new uh, uh, super cool thing, if you want to buy, build a desktop application or mobile application reacting on um, UI, UI events, you can use a Twisted Reactor for that too. Uh, so here is an hello world, you can see an handler, you can see a server, you can see a reactor listening on um, a pole on the reactor running, which is pretty much like the tornado code. Quite the same. Uh, main drawbacks in Twisted, it's uh, running on one thread, like any event loops, this is one drawback, and one personal drawback, I think, is the Fairbose API that you have in Twisted. Uh, if, you, if you look at this code, I think it's pretty, not so much uh, actually, this one. But uh, it can be a lot more Fairbose and a lot Javaist, and not, uh, not so much Pythonist. Um, there is actually w w a very interesting thing in, uh, in Twisted, and to my knowledge, it only exists in Twisted. This is the defred callback. callback. Uh, I uh, only learned the powerfulness of Defred uh, yesterday. But um, Defred are pretty, um, actually, awesome. So here you have a get page, uh, which does the same that we did uh, in the task in Tornado. Uh, the, the goal of the get page function is to get the content of the URL and return this content, simply. Here the get page function returns a Defred object in Twisted. And when you get the content of the page, you obviously want to do something on this content. Here, we will extract the Im image URL. So we add a callback to the thread. When the content comes, we call the extract image URL functions. And when we have extracted the image URL, the first thing you will do generally is to go to fetch this image. So just add an, a new callback to this thread. And what does it what does it do? It does Sorry. Uh, it it is first extracting the image URL when the content comes back the first time you call the URL. Then when the content comes back, it go back to the get page URL and then really extract the content the, the image get, uh, fetch the image. Sorry. Then you fetch the image and uh, and you have the image and you do do, do anything. Uh, maybe put it on the another page or maybe put it on your file system. This is the uh, function that is getting the image URL. Uh, the other pretty cool thing in, is that in uh, Defred is that you can defer the error, so you can just get the error at the end of your application or react uh, after uh, a number of errors. Um, another. Um, and the thing that we are, that you can use in Python uh, to uh, to make concurrent programs is stackless, uh, from which uh, greenlets have been extracted. So stackless is a Python uh, with mostly greenlets and some optimization. I actually had some optimization uh, ten years ago. Uh, in Python uh, now there are no more optimization compared to Python um, uh, runtime, but what does it do? It, it allows you to schedule tasks. Uh, you have tasklet that are mostly like uh, greenlets or like tasks in plan nine, and you have channel that uh, should be the only mean to uh, to share uh, your data from task, uh, from one task to another task. For I/O, unfortunately, you don't have a, a good um, a good system in um, stackless. So you have stackless I/O. IO that is written by Ev online, that is the main contributor and uh, the original uh, creator of Stackless, but it's closed. The other way, uh, Stackless Lib acts uh, that uh, in Stackless Lib you can use um, a pole, uh, an event loop based on uh, on CACU. You can use a, a another loop based on libuv2 and uh, such thing, but that are just acts. So, Flora, or rather Tulip. Uh, my goal of Flora is to build a collection of modules to, uh, to, to allow you to build, uh, to easily build any concurrent programs. 
Uh, this is also a way for me to experiment uh, Go concurrency models. I started by trying to port the Erlang um, models to Python. So I'm an Erlang guy. Uh, I was thinking that I could port the actor models to Python. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is quite impossible to do it in Python. This is not, Python is not dot for that. And you need to, to port the, the actor model from Erlang to have uh, the message processing, the message passing API uh, on the core system, not on the, on the top of the system. But the Go concurrency model can work pretty well. Uh, the other thing I want to do with Flora is to provide a disruptive API. I, I won't try to monkey patch uh, API. I will provide, uh, and I'm providing objects to, uh, to another connection, to, to, to TCP connection, EDP connection, Unix connection. And I'm providing an uh, API to build server, to listening on socket, etc. This is a different API from the Google one, the Python one. I don't try to make it patch at all. So just go back on the Go concurrency model. So if they are using uh, what they call Go routine, which are in fact tasks. Uh, Go uh, has been written mostly by the two creators of uh, Plan 9, so it shares a lot of the concept. A good routine doesn't know anything about others, and channels are the only way to communicate uh, between Go routines. So this is a simple hello in Go. So you start a task here. Uh, this task will print R that you have set here. Uh, the important thing is to know is that if you don't provide the A here, or if you have um, an aggressive uh, computer in Go, uh, this function could, uh, uh, could not be run sometimes, because the computer will be faster than executing the, the task. But this is the concept of, uh, of where to go back. Because the main synchronization between Go routines are channels. And um, a send on the channel happens before uh, uh, we start to, to receive on it. So here, uh, we don't use channel, but here, we are reusing some functions. So we have the main functions. We start to, um, uh, to put uh, in the scheduler the function. And we start to listen on the channel. Uh, the function that have been scheduled later will be then executed because here we are going back in the scheduler when you start to listen on the channel. And we set the value of R, of A, and we write to the channel a zero, a null. Then the channel will receive the null and we are going back in the main function and we print A. So the same hello if lower, I said I was inspired by uh, Go. Uh, so we have the A, A that we fix. We have this function that prints the A. And here we set the A and we put a task in the scheduler that will be run with the run function that is missing here. And with channel, uh, we create a channel. Uh, we set an empty value for the A. We have no type in Python. The function will set the A and sorry uh, will send the null bit to the channel and here in the main function we are schedule the function, start to receive on the function. At this point we go back in the scheduler, waiting uh, that the channel is written, and then we print A. a. Here uh, something that will be removed in the next version we are spanning the main function and we are running the scheduler at, at the bottom. Uh, to make it happen in, in Flower, we are using greenlets just like gevent, but on the contrary of gevent, uh, the scheduler has nothing to do with uh, an event loop. Um, the event loop is actually running uh, using PyUV, uh, but uh, it is working in a, in a routine, in a coroutine. But this coroutine um, in, the, in the current version is put in the scheduler. Uh, in the next version that will be released on Monday, uh, is uh, the, 
event loop is put in, in, in its own thread, so it won't block, and any syscall won't block Flower at all. <coughs> so here is a simple echo server uh, using Flower. So I am uh, I'm, I'm scheduling uh, my main function. I'm start to listening on TCP on the on the port eight hundred eight thousand, and well, uh, I don't stop. I, I accept the connection. When I accept the connection, I schedule. Uh, I'm starting to process my my connection later, and this connection will start. Uh, will process. Sorry, the function and I just get the data and send it back to the clients. So when I say descriptive API, you, you can say here I don't use uh, any socket objects. I'm using listings. I'm using read. You have also write and write lines. This is the only function that you have. So we can work pretty much with any uh, event loops BI. So uh, we are running today with PyUV and LibUV, but uh, uh, I was saying this morning that it could also work with Twitter if you want. And the client is using a dial object that is dialing on TCP and the uh, 8,000 ports and uh, each write hello three times and getting back the result three times. Then we just run the function, the scheduler. Um, so Flora is a moving target. Code uh, is pr uh, will much a little, uh, will move a little. Uh, syntax will move a little. I would call definitely tasklet and schedule function. Uh, there will be, a, so like I was saying, there will be a new, uh, new way to handle I.O. I will use threads to put the event loops, or actually any syscall or any blocking call. So, so any routines will be able to run in parallel and won't block the scheduler. Uh, the channel syntax will change. Uh, this is actually an act. This is an object uh, in lower case, which I know is not pay paid. Uh, but code and pay paid. But, um, so it will be rename make chain and we, it will be a function. Uh, task slate will be rename task. And maybe why not write our own statements? So you have the go, you have the with, uh, you have the with in Python, you have the print in Python statements. So why not to have a pro statement or maybe a go statement in Python, which can be no, uh, uh, added dynamically when you run Python. And that's it. You can find the code on the uh, floor and uh, the examples. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I was confused with the uh, Go example. You said that uh, these Go routines don't share any state. Yeah but they both read and write to a global variable A. And how does it happen? Well, this is not advanced. Uh, because here, uh, by default, go, the Go scheduler is running in one thread. But you can set it to run on, on, on parallel thread. Uh, in that case, it won't work. Or the result won't be guaranteed. Uh, the, the, the right way is using channel. Thank you.